Hi, everybody. Welcome to Culturama Day Four. This is the f this is Friday of, of weekend number two, and we're here to talk about small press publishing. And um, with two two of my favorite small press publishers, uh, Rich Seuss and Francesca Terzano. Um, I just want to tell you that a lot of these uh, are being taped, and we're keeping Culturama going all year long. The way to participate in that is to go to the screen that I'm about to show you. Um, to go here, it's just a blogger spot, um, and we, we're putting up the recordings for the um, for the episodes that we're allowed to record. But also, there'll be news uh, about what we're going to do in the future. So, if you go over to here and um, uh, just follow, you'll, you'll become part of the community, and that way you'll get updates and stuff. Um, so, please, please do that, and I will drop this in the chat um, for those of you who are watching this as a recording, that's uh, HTTPS uh, colon slash slash culturama community dot blogspot dot com. So, okay, great. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, hi, Ivan. And I'm, I'm glad you were able to do that, Nikhil. Okay, so, so um, we will, uh, I'll turn it over to Francesca and Rich. Uh, Francesca runs a magazine. Rich runs a magazine and a book publisher company. All right. Quick, uh, Nakao, I want to remind you to pin Eva's um, window because we are going to be sharing some stuff. That way, you see her screen when the shares when we're sharing our screens. So, real quick, I want every I want to um, share my screen real quick because my magazine is currently having an opening, and it's a theme mag. It's a theme, but the theme is super open because it is literally about social distancing. Um, so anything that you've written during the lockdown is open. The parameters are poetry needs to be 32 lines, flash fiction under 2000 words and fiction no more than a thousand words, even though me and John disagree on that number. <laughs> I'm right. Huh? And then, uh, you, and also my magazine is very open to art and poetry. And it's not a requirement, but I really love um, art and poetry about nature to be in my issues. It's something that is a common theme among all my issues. And I will put this in the chat, but where you submit your stuff to me is to literaryalchemysubmit at gmail.com. Very cool. It says 200 words. Did it say 200 for, words? I'm very for, tired. For I, apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. Well, that would make more sense because 2,000 words is more than 1,000, so. No, yeah, I'm very tired. <laughs> it's okay. I don't even know what I'm saying. So I'll introduce myself real quick. I'm Mitch Seuss. I, when I was in college, I started a magazine called Seven Stars Magazine that went on for 25 years. And we ended up being able to squash 6,000 pages into a little tiny book like that. And right now I publish Troy and Needles magazine. This is our December issue, issue 48. Um, and we're hoping this goes on. This is four years old, obviously 48. And we're hoping to go 25 years with this one. And that keeps me young. And we also publish books. We published over a hundred books and one of them was by this best-selling author. Uh, you might know him a little bit, John Brantingham, Crossing the High Sierra. So that's the kind of stuff I do, and I'm here mostly to answer your questions. So, yes, thanks. I'm here to answer your questions about publishing, or also if you want to submit something to me while we're here, I'm open to that as well. Uh, Fred, are you open to reading their thing out loud and talking about what, whether okay. it's a good fit or a bad fit, that kind of thing? Yep, I'm very open to that. Um, you might not feel comfortable coming on, on screen and saying stuff, so please feel free to ask whatever questions you have in the chat. Oh, there it is. Is um, it possible for me to see the chat? Yeah, just so you just click the chat on. button. So maybe I will start off the questioning. Um, just generally, what, what are you looking for when you're looking for, what are, what are things that you don't want? What are things that you do want in your magazine? I'm going to let Rich answer that first because those answers are on my website. So give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are pretty simple. Uh, I don't want anything about 
Biden or Trump right now. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like any more poems about COVID. Oh, what? that's the opposite of me. Send me as many po poems about <laughs> COVID as you want. <laughs> that's, see, there's something for everybody out there. Uh, I get over 90 submissions a day. And since the past six months have been mostly about COVID, I'm just sick of them. Um, there are two poems in our January issue. Luckily, they're very short that I did accept way back in June or July. And they're going to appear in January because we're still dealing with this COVID stuff. But yeah, I don't, I don't like them very much because they all sound like the directly from the headlines of the newspaper. I guess that's what, that, that's what I'm not looking for is stuff that you can read in the newspaper or hear on the news all the time. Uh, what I am looking for and our motto is the Choya Needle, uh, a poem that when it enters your skin, it stays there. And if you have to pull it out, it, it's twice as deep as it was when it went in. And it just, it stays with you forever. And that's the type of poetry I look for. I love that as, as a metaphor, you know. Uh, oh, just so you know, he runs Choya Needles Press. And I'd never heard of a Choya Needle until I, I talked to you. Um, and it, it sounds really terrible, but also a great metaphor for poem. It's like yeah. a fish hook. So I guess if you're looking at my magazine, um, the best way I can describe it is if you took Stephanie's magical realism glass, I would say that's a common thing among all my issues, wouldn't you say, John? Because mm -hmm. I'm called literary alchemy and what I mean by that title is just literary magic. So like the magic you find in your writing. So, so you're, you're looking for less Bukowski-esque kind of thing and more a Stephanie Hammer kind of thing. Or um, Margaret Artwood. Okay. Sorry, I'm a huge Margaret Artwood fan. <laughs> um, okay, great. What, what kind of questions do y'all have for uh, these two? Uh, did you want me to go over your, my rules oh, real quick? Absolutely. Um, so my rules are pretty much the same as any press's rules. Um, I know how Zoom works. Uh, okay, so basically it is, it's on my website and you can go to my website, literaryalchemypress.com to find all of this, but it's just basically the same. Don't double dip if you've already submitted your poem and it's been accepted. Don't, um, sub don't resubmit to my magazine. Um, when you submit, give me a fun two line bio about yourself. No inappropriate photography or artwork. Keep it, P keep everything PG-13, but cursing is fine. And then if you're sending me short stories, three short stories to four poems. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have any limits for poetry. Never mind. So if you're sending me short stories, only send me three short stories. And most importantly, have fun. In our magazine, we, we take six poems if they're full page poems, but like I just finished uh, working on one set that is 36 poems because they were all haiku and they all fit on six pages. So each person in our magazine gets six pages and what it ends up being is 10 mini chat books within two covers is how we mm. describe it. So someone just asked what our response time is. Um, oh, and another question. I'll answer the second question first since it's directed at me. Um, literary Alchemy is both online and print. So I provide a free copy online and then you can buy a hard copy through Amazon. And then for um, you can, the second question is about our response time, Rich. Um, my response time when I wasn't teaching was like a week. But now that I'm teaching, it's probably like two weeks to a month. Basically, when my semester is over, I will be able to respond. Mm, yeah. And I can say mine is usually within a week. Um, a lot of times it's within a day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, her depends stories, on how full the mailbox is. Yeah, her <laughs> stories, that was done, That all that artwork was done by my best friend. So that's another thing I want to bring up. If you have a chat book that you're not sure where to submit it, as long as it stays within the PG-13 range, you can, I don't openly say that, but you can submit that to me and I will look at it and see if it can be published through my magazine. Because it's not just the magazine, it's also a small press. 
it's just Kathy's um, chat book has only been the only thing published through that aspect of the press. That's great. Um, great. Uh, I wonder if you could tell us about, uh, we've got some people here who have been publishing for a while. In fact, um, Kelsey's got a book coming out. Uh, but we also have people who've never published before. How, how do they? How does somebody go through the process of sending their their work to a magazine like yours? And what should be in the letter and the, all that kind of stuff? Well, always follow the directions. Um, the I'm I'm very casual about this, but a lot of presses are. If you don't follow our directions to the T, we won't accept you. So that stuff like don't put your story in the subject unless they say to do that. Usually they want your stuff to be an attachment. And then also like where they say your bio should be, if it should be in the subject or in, in the text box, just make sure you follow those directions because a lot of presses will kind of put aside your work if you don't follow the directions mm -hmm. for that simple of a reason. But I'm casual. I don't know how casual Rich is about it. <laughs> I don't know if the word casual is right for me, but it's, um, I whatever way is easiest for the author to get their work to me or the artist, that's how I want them to send it. I don't want them to run through any hoops to get through me. Um, they said, because I've been working with poets since 1972 and you know, the best ones are always the ones that don't do it right. You know what I'm saying? And if you make them follow the rules, you lose an awful lot of uh, great poetry in, in your years. So uh, Bukowski used to send them on postcards, you know, which was really kind of weird, but you know, that's the way it works. You make it work the way it works. That's great, that's great. Um, do you have any uh, like horror stories, things that people definitely should not have done? Uh... Not for my press, no. I've heard about it with other people's presses, but I've never had anything where someone like submitted something so wrong that I was like, oh, I can't accept this. I, I've never had that happen to me. Yeah, I've never had that problem either. The, the, uh, the only horror story I have is from one guy who was, used to sit outside my doorstep staring at my door and waiting for me to come out, you know, that was kind of freaky. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but it was like he was, he wanted to be a writer really bad. And he thought by being in a place where, <laughs> where stuff could be published would make him be seen. But yeah, mm. that, that was um, weird. But that, Richard, that's, someone wants to know your website. Uh, Choyaneedles.com. And I just dropped that in. Um, another thing that's, oh my God, I just had it in my head and now I lost it. Another good, I remember it is. So there's two different types of rejections. There's the, we're not going to accept your work. And then there's the, we'll accept it if you work on it. So if you like work with the publisher to make those changes and to see their feedback, then all what you have to do is work on your poem and then they will most likely accept it. I've had that a couple of times where like, hey, I really liked your poem, but maybe if you switch some of these lines, um, it'll help it become stronger. And then the author agreed with me and then I published it. Right, it's, it's getting the author to agree with you. That's the key. And some authors really believe their work came direct from God to them and to the page and they will not change anything. And that's okay. You just don't publish them. Um, and then, <laughs> that's true. And then the ones that say, yes, I do want to, I do want to be published. I do want to communicate with other people. Uh, they're the, they're the fun ones to work with. And then of course there's the pros that already have edited themselves. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, I, I wonder if you could uh, talk about just things that you wish that you knew uh, when you first started, started trying to publish. The best advice I ever got was from, um, why am I forgetting my favorite Canadian's name? Anders. Anders is that um, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting your work. So meaning don't take it personally that your work got rejected. It was probably not that it was bad. It's just, it just wasn't a fit for that magazine. Yeah, that's a good point. 
I, I worked at a magazine for 25 years and the number one reason we rejected people is we just were full. There you go. <laughs> well, that, that doesn't work with a monthly magazine, but. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, well. but with a zine, it's like, I, I, it's like, that's never been an issue for me that it was too much because <laughs> it's just because a zine is so small. <laughs> I did, um, I thought your question was, what was, what did I wish I had known? I know that when I first started publishing, the only magazine I knew of in those days was poetry and it came out every month in those days. And I thought that's, so <laughs> when we started our first magazine, we came out monthly because I thought that's the way it was supposed to be. And <laughs> I'm, I'm actually glad I, I had not heard of quarterlies or bi-yearlies or anything because I'm constantly busy with poetry and I love it that way. Um, I think if it was like quarterly, there'd be chunks of my time when I was not doing poetry and I, I'm not sure I would like that. So even though I, I wish I had known about quarterlies in those days, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that sounds like a little bit like a uh, an education sort of thing, like you you, it, it there's something valuable to just kind of knowing the markets and knowing what's out there and that kind of thing, and it used to be so much harder to find magazines because uh, we didn't have the internet. Oh, yeah, because we didn't have the, you guys didn't have the internet. Okay. Oh. <laughs> He's done. Like I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> the internet we had was called Small Press Review. <laughs> And yeah, I'm, let, I'm, let, let, he came out every single month telling, you know, tell, telling what was happening in the poetry world. So that was great. Yeah, yeah. I loved him. He was, he was dust books, right? Yep, dust books, Len Poulton. Yeah. Okay, so I, I feel like I've dominated the, the questions. Who, who else has questions? Yeah, Nikel. I'm wondering. Do you want poems that are long? Do you want things that are more like short or you want short stories? What's the what's the longest thing that you've published? What's the shortest thing you've published? Uh, I would have to look at my issues to see what the longest thing I published. Technically, the longest thing I published was Kathy's chapbook. But I think I have the 32 lines limit, but I'm kind of casual with that. If you reach like 40, I'm not gonna like reject you because you've reached 40 lines. But my but it does say on the rules, I'm um, 32 lines at most. The uh, we have one writer that writes monocus which is basically a haiku on one line. <laughs> so I published one line poems and the book that we that will be coming out next year, but we've already printed it and, and have it proofed and everything is Family of Man. It's 700 and something pages. So we don't have limits. I've, I've never published a one word poem that I remember. <laughs> that is a thing though. Yeah. Yeah. Gerald Lachlan has a great one word poem. It's, Remember it? <laughs> yeah. It, the title is, is, is Bukowski a better poet than Shakespeare? And the poem goes, no. <laughs> John talks about that in every single one of his creative writing classes. No, I don't. Just, technically, just, it's not a one word poem because the title is longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets a lot of, he does a lot of work with that title. Uh, okay, so I thought it was Toad. Um, so Kelsey asked, I've learned a lot from editors this way. Are there poem formats that are more difficult to publish? Um, go ahead and answer that because I have to bring up an example of that that I published once. The, the question is a poem that's hard to publish? Poem yeah. form. Like is a Villanelle more difficult than a, than a free verse poem, that kind of thing? Oh no, I, I, I go by what's on the page and a, a bad villanelle is, is horrible and a good villanelle is wonderful, so. Is a villanelle, that's what it's called when it makes a picture? 
no, no. That, that's a concrete poem. And she, she she also asked, are shape poems difficult to publish? Mixed media, is that difficult? So um, that's the example I'm trying to find because I'm on my laptop, not my desktop. So I don't have my stuff on here. But um, one of my um, one of my good friends, Savannah, she published a poem through me that was in the shape of a hummingbird. And that was difficult to publish because it wasn't a JPEG. So I had to turn it into a JPEG because if I reformatted it into the format I have for the issues, then it would have like completely destroyed the shape. So if you want to do a concrete poem, um, it possibly would be better to submit it as a JPEG, like take a screenshot of it or put it in Photoshop and then make it a JPEG. Mm. Yeah, I have one here in, that was in seven stars. And I basically had to do that. I had to photocopy it and then uh, make a JPEG out of it or scan it and make a JPEG because trying to do that on the computer these days is next to impossible. But we had uh, typewriters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't imagine trying to do that on top of a typewriter. <laughs> it was easier on a typewriter than, than trying because you could visualize it, but the spacing, uh, try, try to do it HTML with something like that, that'd be impossible. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think what both Rich and I are saying is we are open to it. It's just, it's hard to publish. So try to possibly make it a JPEG and indicate that it's actually a poem. Well, I think what you're doing there is you're, you're recognizing there's an artistic element to, to what you're doing. You're trying to publish both poetry and art. How about mixed media? Do, do you do mixed media? You mean like videos? Oh, just anything. Like I know a lot of people will do um, like painting poems and that sort of thing. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm completely open to that. As long okay. as it's PG-13. And that's the kind of thing where like a JPEG, a JPEG would be easier to submit than, um, than yeah. some kind of <laughs> and that's dot just, box. Yeah, okay. that's that's just issues of formatting. Um, I do everything on Word and Word likes to reject everything that's not a JPEG, so. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, we, we put a lot of like video, video poems on our website. Um, oh, cause you're doing that open, open mic thing, right? The, right. Um, the monthly, is it monthly? Well, sometimes you're doing both one. though aren't you you're posting videos sorry <laughs> i follow your press a little bit so you're you're posting videos and you're you're holding an open mic is that right. is that correct rich right right we're doing the open mic on s sunday afternoons and uh well it's not really an open mic so we could submit every everybody's um I think we started as an open mic and figured out real quick it wasn't going to work. So I, I, we do oh, featured readers because it's only twenty minutes long. Okay, yeah, yeah. Twenty minutes long. So we have featured readers every every month, every week. And then I take parts of that every and week put it on the what the there we have that one web page. It's called Open Mic because they take videos from people who send me videos of themselves reading poems. And I place them on the website. Oh, I finally found it. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's that's three o'clock Pacific Standard Time, isn't it, Rich, on Sundays? The Zoom one? Yes, yes, it is. So I really recommend it. I've, I've loved every single one I've gone to. Yeah, so um, just a quick example of what I'm talking about is my friend Zavanna um, submitted this poem that looks like a hummingbird, but um, I noticed I made a mistake. If you can see it right here, my cursor is there when I took the picture. So, you know, just try to already provide a picture of it. Oh, I see that, yep. Yeah, that it's happened. like right there. I, if I, you can only see it if you point it out. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's cool. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, because sometimes I stray away from like, completing that kind of project because like I'm not sure what to do with it which I know is like less of an artistic question than like what you're making but <laughs> I do like to meet people and connect to people through art so yeah it's good to know. 
know you guys are open to that. And one of the things I'm always looking for is art for our covers. Yes, yeah, same. So that, that's interesting. So we've got some artists too. I've got an artist sitting right over here. Um, and uh, what, what do you think the relationship with literary magazines and art is? Um, should we should artists be submitting? How should they do that, et cetera? What it needs to be is seen as the same thing, but what it is right now is seen as separate. I agree. So we, um, a lot of literary, uh, I'm saying a lot of literary magazines for some reason will use stock photos and that's taking away opportunities from artists. Even though technically those stock photos are by artists, it's they're not able to advertise that way. So I think we need to bring more artists into the literary world so they can have another avenue for them to advertise their artwork. That's great. And like the, the December issue has a color cover by Jeremy Suter, who's from San Bernardino. Uh, he's down there anyway, San Bernardino area. And then inside what he did was draw a picture of each of our authors Oh, wow. So I love doing that, have the same artist on the cover and then sketches by them inside. And what we, a lot of times I ask the artists, you know, they, they're semi-popular artists to give the sketch work of stuff they had done before they had finished products so people could see the progression of their, their art through the magazine. And, you know, we've done all kinds of experiments with art that way. Um, some artists only like to put out the finished product, which is fine. That's really cool. That's interesting. And then John's wife did this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm, still, I'm still waiting for a book of Anne's pictures on one side and his poems on the other. So we're not just looking at all these words all the time. And oh. that's coming. What? That, uh, 2025? Yeah, well, no, we're, we've got some time off uh, starting in December, so that, that's one of our projects. Yeah, I recently cool. reorganized my book so I couldn't find my issues. I only found three of two of them. So um, this one was done by my best friend who also did um, her stories. And um, in Kathy's chat book, it's some of the pages because I didn't want to drive my best friend crazy is um, the poetry and then the art and inspired right next to it. There you go. So this is also a bigger chat book. It's not usually this size, it's usually this size. But the reason why this was so bigger is Amazon said that this would be a better way to see the photos. And then this one is done by my other friend, Sarah. So um, I always make sure to publish local artists like this one is by Ken Kendall's wife. So I always make sure to publish local artists. Oh, and of course there's Anne. <laughs> Excellent. I want Anne to do my next cover, but I know she's busy. <laughs> she, she just asked, when does it need to be done? Um, January. I just want cherry blossoms. She, she just gave you thumbs up for cherry blossoms. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. So that, that, that's, uh, that's publishing for you. That, that's how quickly it goes sometimes. Um, okay, so uh, what are the questions do do y'all have? I see there's lots of different types of people here. So I, I, I do want to mention, we also publish essays. Um, I look for essays on, on ecology and, and things like that, and short stories. Uh, John, I think, just had a series of flash fiction in the magazine, correct? Not yeah. too long ago, uh, very and uh, so I try to keep all types of things, but it, focus on a literary. We also publish reviews, but those I publish online. Okay, like we Margaret Atwood's new uh, poetry book came out this week. I think I have a reviewer for that, but maybe I can bug Francesca about doing that since she's familiar with her poetry. Oh, the siren is, I mean, not her recent poetry, but the siren is literally one of my favorite poems. I plan on having that tattooed on me someday. 
uh, we, we've got a couple of couple of questions. Nikel had one, but then was pulled away. So I'm sure it's, when she comes back, she'll have it. Um, uh, Sheila asks, what sizes are required for the illustrations? What's the preferred media? That depends on the magazine completely. Um, and that's why most magazines work, uh, say JPEG, because we can, that's the easiest to resize. Um, you should also indicate to the publisher, this looks better in a bigger format than in a smaller format. So they know how to publish the photo. Yeah, now, now um, Rich, I'm gonna show you yes. the other one that I did with you. Um, you do sort of extraordinary work with, with art. Um, and if you can see inside yeah, those are Those are my personal favorite books to work on because they're art and poetry inside. And um, what, what are you looking for in a painting? When I mean, you've got an abstract expressionist painting here with, with the poetry. Um, are you looking for anything specifically when you're looking for this kind of thing? No, I'm looking, uh, it, it's the same as with the poetry. What I'm looking for is, I'm looking for the, the person inside it, inside the work, the artist or the poet. I'm looking for that. And I'm also looking that even though they're inside there, that they're expressing that outward so that audience has something to grab onto when they're reading it. Because there's a lot of really, really personal poems uh, that don't speak to an audience at all. I mean, I'm talking tons of those. They, they come out of these MFA meetings. I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> but they do. Uh, just this month, I, I, for a long time, we didn't get any poems at all. Then all of a sudden this month we got like, it was 181 one day. Wow. And turns out these uh, MFA guys who are now online are sharing <laughs> addresses with their students and saying, send work here, send work here. So that's scary when it happens, but you know, gotta start, every, every writer has to start somewhere. Um, Lisa Lugo does not have a website, but I will put her Instagram in the chat and tell her she has a new fan. <laughs> Okay, um, I, I, I believe we have two questions, um, just based on nonverbal communication. Um, I think uh, Nikhil had a question, but I'm not sure if she's at the computer right now. And I think Jennifer had a question. No? Oh, okay, just because you you came on screen, I thought maybe you did. Um, and I saw Nikhil had her hand up a little while ago. Okay, here is Elisa's Instagram. I keep telling her she should get a website, but she doesn't listen to me. It's one thing we, we were lucky this year we had a volunteer to do our Instagram pages because I had I, I tried to figure it out and I couldn't. So yeah. what, what, what about that? Uh, what do you think there's a, a role for social media blogs and that there, sort of thing? There is definitely a role. Um, I definitely need to get trained a little bit more in social media, mostly because I don't have the time to advertise. But there is definitely, um, I've, the, um, the only way I've had people publish outside of California in the winter issue was because they saw my advertisement on Twitter through hashtags. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so what, what hashtags do you use and how do people use that? I don't know, that's a question for a media influencer. <laughs> um, just like, you know, publishing, um, publication open, just uh, fiction poems, stuff like that. Just simple hashtags usually reach people because Twitter does have a huge literary community. I just haven't quite tapped into it yet. Yeah, and Tom Thomas is also a longtime publisher. Um, uh, ask about yeah. the cost for a book like that. You, you've got such an incredibly colorful book here. Uh, is it more expensive? Yes. <laughs> What's that? Um, the, well, Tom can answer too, but uh, because um, when I published, I started publishing these in color and Amazon took more money out of it once it's in color, if you do it through Amazon. Well, yeah, our, our books come through Amazon too and they, I think they do marvelous work. Um, yes, it's more expensive, but like we're still able to keep the price down by keeping the number of pages down, like the minimum number of page, I mean, um, yeah, 40 pages is, 
cost the same as 24 pages. So we were able to make 40 page uh, mm. color books. And that's why the books are all basically the same size, the art books, because they're full page. And then we're able to sell them for 10 bucks instead of, you know, it, the more pages, of course, the more expensive it would be. Um, Nicole is back, so if she wants to ask her question. Did you have a question? Oh, no, I'm good. Oh, okay. Oh, oh sorry. Your hand okay. Um, uh, okay, so uh, what are the questions you have, just specifically to these two or generally about publishing? I have a question. How long do you guys have to take on editing afterwards? It seems like a, publishing a book would be a, a, a huge process just from the editing part. It, it's, uh, it depends on two things. So it depends on if I'm publishing a, um, a mag my magazine or my zine or a chat book. So with a chat book, that takes longer and the author has to be um, like really open to working with you. Because me, I am such, I just, I, I think it's because I'm diagnosed with OCD. I'm such a particular person when it comes to publishing a chat book that I just want it to look beautiful and perfect. Um, with my zine, it, the editing process doesn't take as long. Um, and usually if I'm struggling, I'll reach out to someone like John, like, hey, can you look at this poem for me? Something isn't right about it. And so it just depends because I'm running this by myself. So it just depends on how many people are within the press. How about you, Rich? Um, I'm busy like seven days a week, probably five to six hours a day. So <laughs> the, the editing gets done. I mean, it does get done. It's all part of it. Um, but because we come out every month and there's 100 pages a month, it, it's just constant it's um but it is interesting because like i'm usually three to four months ahead on submissions and this past two months have been nothing but covid and trump and, and biden poems so i have not accepted a poem in in two months tell him to so come a, my way rich it's a little bit afraid, uh, you know, scary for next year. It's like, what the heck? But I'm sure the Biden Trump stuff will stop here pretty quick. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, that and the generative generative workshops here in Pultorama should be sent your way. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like a really great opportunity for us, right? Sure. Everybody here, well, you're welcome. Editor at TroyNeedles.com. <laughs> Anytime. And... Yeah, we need a good batch from each person because usually it takes, you know, writing back and forth and finding six pages of, of wonderful stuff. Sometimes, uh, you know, like if I if if you send me six poems and I keep one, I'm still going to need five more from you. So it's that kind of that kind of uh, correspondence between me and the and the poet. Um, someone asked, how far in advance do you accept work? So you go ahead and go first, French, since you're monthly. Well, like I just explained, there's two poems in the January issue. In fact, all the poems in the January issue were accepted last June. Um, there was two months when I had guest editors. Uh, so I, that put me, my the group of people I had accepted back a little bit, but nobody complains because Everybody's used to having a poem accepted and having the magazine appear a year later. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, mine has been on hiatus ever since I started teaching. So this is the first time we're coming back. Um, so I, I, I really can't answer that question right now because I need people to submit. No one has submitted to this issue yet. So if you're here, you should submit. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Okay, so we got we've got two really open things. As long as it's not about COVID, uh, or Trump and Biden, send it to Rich, and then just send uh, all that stuff to Francesca too. And I'm sure you you have some kind of COVID poetry, some sort of Biden poetry, Trump poetry. Right. 
I, I, I guess I COVID know. sort of fits his nature. Yeah. I, I will admit, though, if it is Trump, um, <laughs> just putting unless it's anti-Trump, I'm just kind of I'm not trying to be biased, but I'm just kind of putting that out there. No, I. It, since I'm working mostly with poets, like it's all anti-Trump, so whatever. Okay. Okay. So, so um, let's see. What 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 are the questions do people have? Question. I was trying to think back to my writing, the poetry that I had written, and different essays. So the editing I need to do, I would of course edit before I send it in, but then like I have these, it's called The Love of Pets. So it's like, so I'm translating this. Oh, it's, it's about they're searching for pets to stay, to rescue and then sending them out to new homes. And, uh, I sent them out to some places and I, and uh, I guess they were really kind of shocked by it. But then I was looking for, and some places it said they had accepted it, but then I couldn't find it in any of the publishings. So this is what. Hmm. So, yeah, so that's what I have so far. I, I, I'm just confused by your question. So it was, uh, they said they accepted it and it never got published? Yeah, it was a while ago. It, or it did get published. It was a book that, oh, it was an old book that actually went into publish, publication, but then uh, I guess it, they no longer publish it. It's like 2012, I think. Oh, they're a company that, deletes their old oh i hate people who do that <laughs> when they it's a company so some publishing companies do make it so you can't find their very old archives i don't know why they do that um so if you can no longer find it on the internet that's up to the publisher if they want to double dip yeah the, the double dip thing is is interesting what i tell writers when you're ready to start doing the double dip thing, um, because in the magazine, we have an ISS number, which restricts us to first rights only. That means that the first time something has appeared anywhere. Um, and that's what, if, if you send a poem that had been published somewhere else, that's why what the term she's using, uh, double dip. But when you're ready to do that, you're probably ready to start putting your first chapbook or book together. Exactly. So that's usually the exception to the double dip rule that Tom does all the time with his chapbooks. If you have one poem that's been published somewhere else, but makes sense with the group of poems, usually a publisher will be that. And they'll say somewhere in the notes, this poem has been published here. Correct. You got it. But yeah, I definitely agree with Rich. If you're at the point where you think you're double dipping, it's probably the time to like start to accumulate all your work and start so many chat books. Do you, do you have work that you're ready to send out, Nikhil? Um, I, I just have that one. So then I have other things that I had worked on previously, but they're sort of in a different genre. Mm. So I was just looking at this one and trying to figure out where it could get published. But yeah, no, I don't really have anything else. Yeah. And I'm going to say this to Cal, but it's for everybody here. Um, my job at Mount Sac is, one of my jobs is to help you get published. So please come by and I'll help you edit and I'll tell you where to send it. Uh, two of my first recommendations will be to Francesca and to Rich. Um, yeah, but, thanks. Good. But uh, I'm happy to work with you, y'all, on that. Um, and uh, so, so is Lloyd. So if, if you if, see either one of us, you're, we're we're happy to work with you. 
Does anyone else have any other questions about their particular poetry that they might want to send to me or Rich? I can tell you that and it sounds like Francesca is similar. One of my joys is finding new poets who haven't been published anywhere mm -hmm. else. That's, that's like the biggest joy to just be able to give somebody that boost in their career, you know, get them started. Um, I think it's actually, it, it is in my mission statement on my website that I want to provide a platform for people who have not been published before. And I've and it, I brought, what I have been attracting most, and I think says something about the publishing society is a lot of women of color. So um, I just love giving people who don't have a platform, a platform. Um, some of our upcoming themes. Well, my upcoming theme is social distancing. So that's why I'm okay with COVID and um, Biden poetries poetries, poems, works. Um, and I'll make sure to um, provide a link to my Facebook page where you can find more information about that. And, and Rich, they're asking about upcoming themes. Do you have any upcoming themes? Um, well, we are working on a specific theme for next September. Uh, we Most of my issues are unthemed because I'm look like, like I said earlier, I'm looking for the poem from within and the poet who's writing from within is not writing themes. Mm. Uh, they, in fact, they would probably hate working with themes, <laughs> but we have one issue a year that's tied to the big read. And this next year will be, uh, we're looking specifically for native American writers. And of course it's not themed, it's just the type of, uh, people who are being accepted for that issue are Native Americans. Okay. Well, it feels like we might be winding down a little bit here. Um, um, do we have any last questions, any last suggestions from our publishers? Uh, keep writing. Huh. <laughs> keep writing. The only way to get published is to keep writing. Keep sending stuff out. Um, and something I always tell fiction writers, how many, I, I don't know if you guys can raise your hands. I, I only see like six people on my screen, but if, if you write fiction, uh, this is something I've told all my classes ever since I've been teaching is get yourself an agent. And it's amazing to me how many people won't go through that uh, exercise because they get rejected 15 times. And I think it's better to be rejected by an agent than by a, a magazine because the agent is the one who's gonna be working for you. And you wanna find that one person who will work for you for the rest of your life and help you get paid, help you get a movie made from your work, help you get TV series made out of your work. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's some hundred different outlets now for for uh, TV, what do you call them? TV channels, I guess. Uh, they, they're in constant need of great writing. Um, and the only way to get into that field is through an agent. And it's amazing, like I was gonna say, it's amazing to me how many people won't follow through because they, they, they feel like they're being rejected by the agent. But if you put your, your your life into your writing, uh, you need that agent that is focused on you as their as their uh, their main their means of making an income. Um, yeah, uh, just as, as a as an advertisement, we have uh, the fantastic literary agent Lise Capron speaking a, a week from today at uh, five p.m. Um, Excellent. So you guys who are into fiction, make sure you get to that. A question about that is it short is it just for novels because I, I thought that agents were just for novels what about short fiction no, it's short short stories have uh, you know you want to get into the new yorker you want to get you know they, they're all submitted by agents so if we're talking large press it's it's very often agent and small press not not so much because there's no money 
Right, there's no money in the small press for it's you know for anything actually, but uh, the same book can be published by a small press. Uh, we we a few good men was picked up by a large publisher, and yeah, it's just amazing how much money the the guy who wrote that made from that book because they made a movie out of it and everything. So it, it's okay. worth doing. If you want to look at the big example of that, Fifty Shades of Grey. It's a terrible book. Don't go her route. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. And any any final questions? Um, and also, this session is happening till um, two thirty. And if you're just a little bit shy about um, sh uh, sharing your work after John is done recording, I can stay around till two thirty to look at your work to see if it fits. Will, will you look at their work right now and either accept or reject, possibly? Let's, I'll tell them to send it or not. Okay, that's really that's very that's kind of you. Uh, how would we accomplish that? Uh, we can do share screens and, and that that sort of thing. Or if it's a very short poem, you could put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. I was going to tell people just email it to me, and I I could you know I could spend the rest of the afternoon checking that out. Um, okay. I have stuff to grade and lessons to prepare, so right now is the best time for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just trying to think. Of, I I don't want to look on a screen and try to analyze things on the screen. For me, that would be weird. But uh, that's anybody, great. Anybody that wants to send me something, I'll, I'll be here. So uh, that's great. Since uh, about a half an hour ago, you said something about essays. I've been trying to work up essays in my head, and uh, I think I'm going to try to get a six-page essay for you, Rich. Excellent. Six-page essay. I don't even think that's possible for me to write. All my essays are 12 pages. Oh. It's, a, it's approximately 3,200 words. Okay. That's cool. Uh, of course, it depends on how long your words are. <laughs> I just, that just shows you how grad school ruins you sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thank you all for coming. And I'm going to turn off the, the recording. But if you want to talk to keep talking and just chatting, that's great. All right. Thank you.